big bets in the casino space. Penn National Gaming, initiated by at Goldman and Caesars Entertainment, reinstated to overweight at J.P. Morgan. John, you own Penn. I do, Scott. I'm happy about it, uh, although I took off about half the position today. Um, just two days ago, we had unusual activity in this one again, but those options expire Friday. Scott, I would love to put on a longer-term position in this one because I think the stock could double from here if you look out a year into the future. Uh, the Big 12, with their decision to play, means there's going to be focus again, Scott, on uh, at, at least football in that conference. And people have been locked up waiting for sports. Obviously, baseball and hockey are out there, as well as soccer overseas primarily. But I think you're going to see a lot of folks gravitating towards pen gaming and obviously Barstool does a lot of driving of that activity. No Scott. doubt, no doubt. Stock's up uh, more than 9% right now, Doc. That is the, the highs of the day. We have uh, new street high targets on two big retail names as well. Rahel Solomon tracking those for us. Hey, Rahel. Hi, Scott. So remember Digas just mentioned before the break that he was a buyer of Best Buy? Company actually getting a new street high price target of 127 from Piper Sandler. So analysts note that with the NFL season likely a go and fans unable to attend, they'll see strong home theater sales. They also think with more virtual schooling this fall, Sales of consumer electronics will benefit. The strong product cycles this year, namely the new iPhones and gaming consoles, should also give Best Buy a lift. And on Stevens is raising its price target for Walmart to a new street high of $160 from $140. So they like those reports about a possible Walmart Plus to perhaps compete with Amazon and also drive customer loyalty. Stevens also pointing out that Walmart was well positioned starting the year. They've obviously benefited from increased traffic due to COVID. But they also say that it's just accelerated Walmart's e-commerce business. They call it a winner with or without COVID. So, Scott, remember just yesterday, Jenny Harrington, she mentioned a similar idea when she was talking about Home Depot. She said that they're starting to categorize stocks by how they're going to look after the pandemic. Are they forever worse, forever better, or forever unaffected? She was making that point about Home Depot, but Stephen's essentially making the same point about Walmart. Yeah, applies to Walmart, too. Rahel, thank you. Josh Brown, what do you think about the Walmart call? Price target 160. Can it get there? Uh, this has been this has been a great stock, really dating back uh, to before the pandemic when they got serious about e-commerce. And I think a lot of the things about the environment that we're in uh, are just accelerating adoption. So I think they'll have that tailwind for a while, Scott. I really don't think much changes pre or post vaccine in terms of uh, consumer habits. Once they adopt doing groceries, for example, online, it's going to be hard to convince them that that's not optimal anymore. So I think you'll see people return to the stores, but then a lot of people keep doing what they've been doing. Walmart wins both ways. So I, I, I like the name.